Good day, I'm Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I've done this presentation just to get you started with Wireshark. It's a quick start. So enjoy the presentation and let me know if you have any questions. Let's start with the basics. Why bother with Wireshark? Well, Wireshark can help you do many things, of course. But one of the more obvious things that I find it helps me with is to identify application dependencies. For example, your application needs to go to a server that you weren't aware of which might explain why things are slow or the application doesn't work consistently. Sometimes I'm asked to use Wireshark to figure out access list configuration parameters for things like routers or firewalls. And more importantly, sometimes a PC is just not optimally configured and this can help identify services and or applications that are not acting properly. Ah uh, yes, the OSI model. Of course we've got to review more importantly where Wireshark fits in. Wireshark will not be a layer one or a physical layer tool. That's left to our cable testers or spectrum analyzers. But anything from MAC addressing on up, Wireshark can help identify the source, the destination, and more importantly, how well it's working. One of my favorite tips with Wireshark is the installation command line option. Sometimes I want to install Wireshark and I don't want to have to walk somebody through every single screen and click next, next, next. This is a great way to automate the installation process and it's a catch-22 because obviously it's silent which means that people won't know it's being installed so it's kind of important to understand that whomever you're working with that you let them know this is actually being installed and more importantly how to check the installation process. In this screen I show you how to check the silent installation process using the Windows Task Manager. You will see the Wireshark setup executable running within the task manager during the installation process but you will also see the evidence of Wireshark being installed by having it installed on the toolbar. By going to help and about we can find out the obvious version of Wireshark but I think what you should really pay attention to is the folders tab and that will show you where the configuration files are being held as well as any temporary files or plugins. A little tip I'd like to share is with Windows, add a shortcut key to make Wireshark easier to get to. I like using things like Control shift w which represents the application name Wireshark, but I also use the same tip for SNMP browsers and the command prompt. As I do in all my classes, I'm not going to read through every single option in the Preferences layout screen, but I'd like to bring your attention to the bottom part where it says Custom Window Title. I use this as part of my documentation methodology to explain either where I'm working or what I'm working on. So for example, the tech firm Citrix problem might be a good title name. That way if I ever do a print screen, voila, I've got some documentation right on the picture. Please resist the urge to add a bajillion columns in this screen. I typically only add one extra column called the length, which is the packet length in bytes. I usually want to find out how big the packet is to try to identify how efficient the application is. Another got you I noticed is people will not pay attention to the default interface and simply start a capture and it's pointing to their dial-up or VPN adapter. Please change your default adapter to your wired or wireless adapter. That way next time you hit start you will see data. Another thing I like to share with the students is to disable network name resolution. This will involve an inverse DNS lookup and cause excessive traffic and possibly a performance bottleneck on your PC. For the purpose of this presentation, I'm not going to go through every option in the Capture Options dialog box, but I'd like to bring your attention to two basic fields. One would be the Capture Filter dialog box, where you can obviously put in a capture filter for things like MAC address or IP. But I think you should also pay attention to the stop capture filter settings. And I'll explain that in a few more slides. But right now, you might just want to pay attention to the capture filter. The other thing I, I always check is name resolution to make sure that enable network name resolution is disabled on this screen. In this screen, I'm illustrating what a ring buffer is. A ring buffer will allow you to have multiple files set for either a certain size, in this case 8 megabytes, or you can do it based on time. I discourage time because you really don't know how much traffic is going to traverse that adapter in that time frame. So play it safe and set it for a certain amount of size, in this case 8 megabytes. Please don't try to make this too big, otherwise the analyzer will struggle trying to open the files and saving the files, and more importantly, you the human have to go through it. Sometimes I don't need Wireshark to save many files or any files for me. 
Sometimes I just want Wireshark to stop capturing after a specified amount of time, amount of data, or amount of packets. This is kind of nice to use when you want that unattended capture. You want to walk away, run a test, come back, but you don't want the analyzer running through that entire period of time. The Capture Filter dialog box is a very helpful little facility to use so you can keep track of all your filters and more importantly you don't have to write down or try to memorize all the various filters you've used. This features a bit of a catch-22. I find that sometimes the students will actually inadvertently click on the info header thus sorting the entire trace by that column header. It's a very neat thing to do when you want to do it, but it's very distracting if you have done it by accident. Just use the packet number on the left hand side to keep your bearings if you had inadvertently clicked on a column header. The drag and drop feature is a huge time saver. You can literally drag and drop any file from Windows Explorer to Wireshark and that will open the file. If you select more than one file, Wireshark will actually merge them together using the chronological date stamp within each trace file. The very first thing you're going to want to do when you open up a trace file or when you finish capturing some packets is to resize the columns. You can literally just drag the column length around and make them wider or shorter, but there's a little square icon just beside the magnifying glasses that will automatically resize all the columns. One of the most basic things we use Wireshark for is a conversation list. This will provide a list of either MAC, IP, TCP, or UDP port numbers of conversations on your network. A neat little note, you don't need to stop the analyzer to see this conversation list. You can use this in real time. As I stated earlier, the capture filters kept a list of all your capture filters so you don't have to literally write them down everywhere. Well, display filter has the same facility. You can create display filters so I can refer to them later and not have to, again, make note of them or memorize them. If you have clear text applications and they are TCP based, try follow the TCP stream. Literally right click on any TCP packet and choose follow the stream. This will extract all the text payload and color code it. Red is what you send and blue is what's sent back to you. In this screen I've simply provided a list of shortcut keys that you might want to print off, stick on the wall, and reference as you use Wireshark. This slide is an example of capture filters that you could use and what I've done is simply documented the most common filters I like to use. The MAC address, IP, TCP or UDP port number, and my favorite one, the net filter. This slide simply provides examples of capture filters I like to use. Please note that the host filter doesn't have to be just an IP. You can actually use a host name, which works even if you don't do name resolution with Wireshark. Thank you very much for watching my presentation. If you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to contact me. Have a good day. Bye for now.